YouTube people will have to figure out somebody <laughs> what somebody wants to like that change just now. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> Some kind of alarm. <laughs> anyway, uh, but but the, the fact is, is it was talking about the uh, about uh, worship uh, being uh, in the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, and and uh, and how that was a uh, a heavenly participation. Well, uh, interestingly, now that we're back uh, on how we live this out, it's a much more earthly participation, but. Uh, uh, the the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the Bible teaches us, is really uh, uh, the the source of uh, of our love, um, and uh, you know, and this is the chief of all Christian virtues. Uh, what is it? Uh, and now I'll buy these three: faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love, uh, and it's the Spirit uh, who's described as pouring out God's love into our heart. Uh, that's from Romans, uh, knowing that uh, suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And what's the first of the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, and so forth. But uh, uh, love is the first thing mentioned. So the, he pours out God's love into us, and then it uh, it overflows or comes back out of, a, out, out of us, hopefully, uh, as a, a fruit of the Spirit's presence. Um, the uh, One of the things that... Uh, uh, we were learned in the last chapter is that we're part of a great cloud of witnesses uh, and uh, both in heaven and on earth. Uh, and those uh, uh, us who are still here on earth are being called uh, in, in, in Hebrews there to run the race with endurance, uh, uh, to, to, to fix our eyes on Jesus uh, and um then we're uh, as so the idea of this brotherly love is to encourage each other in the race. Remember, uh, I said back uh, there, spur one another on to love and good deeds back in chapter 10. Uh, and um, so, uh, one of the ways we show brotherly love is to help others uh, in their faith. And uh, this can be done in a lot of ways. Sometimes people just need. In, encouragement uh, and some uh, and some support uh sometimes uh and these are difficult things uh sometimes people need correction uh and uh, uh sometimes uh, uh people uh you know our, our brothers and sisters uh, can be uh can fall into error and uh all of these things are part of the process of biblical love uh and uh you know, love wasn't necessarily always easy. One thing we learned in the last chapter uh, was that he spoke about the discipline of the Lord. Uh, because uh, how did? But how did he define discipline? Discipline is what God does out of His love for us, because a father disciplines the son that he loves. And so uh, these I, these ideas of love uh, in the Bible. Uh, are, um, are 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 deep, and uh, they have a lot of facets to them. And uh, in, in um, the practice of of, of biblical love uh, uh, is costly. All we have to do is look at the life of of, of Jesus and the apostles, uh, uh, and uh, and see how costly uh, love was to them. The love of the apostles for Jesus and the love of Jesus for his uh, for his own. Uh, both cost them uh, in, in in earthly terms quite dearly, but Jesus did say that it was would be love that would be the defining mark uh, of the fact that uh, that someone is actually His. Uh, the we remember that in the upper room after He washed the disciples' feet, He says, "A new commandment I give you, to that you love one another, and just as I have loved you." You also are to love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's John 13, 34, and 35. 
which is followed closely thereafter by uh, the definition of love. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, John 14, 15. Uh, in, in the same discourse, in the same room, right after he said that love is the mark of uh, of, Christ, of uh, Christian discipleship, he also defines love as obedience, uh, obedience to him. And uh, as uh, as the author of scripture, I mean, let's face it, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we accept that, uh, that, that Jesus is, uh, is, is fully God and fully man, uh, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, and they're one in essence uh, and unity, and they were the ones who inspired the, the scriptures. So it doesn't mean just those few words that Jesus, are, that are in red in our Bibles, it includes the whole scripture. It includes the entire um, uh, council of, uh, of the word of God, Old Testament and New. And so uh, this is a, uh, it's a tall order uh, to show our love for Jesus uh, when we consider all uh, that, uh, that heeding his words uh, encompasses. Robbie? Yes, ma'am. What chapter was that last um, quote from? The, the one? Uh, what went about, by this all men shall know you are my disciples? The next one. John, John 15. Love is obedience to him. Oh, uh, John 14, 15. Uh, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, uh, which right. follows right after the, uh, the the verses from John 13 that uh, where he says, uh, by this also know you are my disciples if you love one another. And then a few verses later in John 14, 15, uh, if you love me, you'll keep my, my commandments. Oh, thank you. Sure. One other comment, Robbie? Please. Uh, brotherly love, you may know in the Greek is philia, and thus, thus we have the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, and that's that's exactly the word uh, in the Greek that's uh, that's here in the text, uh, and um, Philadelphia. <laughs> if you probably said it, but. Uh, yeah, the same place that that uh, that, that baseball team comes from, uh, the Phillies. <laughs> I guess they're the they're the, they're the they're the brotherly lovers out there, you know. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be hard to. I mean, you could go on and on uh, with the uh, uh, biblical references about uh, about love, you know. Uh, but uh, the um, it uh so you know uh i think this is a, a the starting point here and uh uh really is the chief of christian virtues a lot of what follows here in the rest of chapter 13 is really how love works itself out uh in in a lot of different relationships and situations uh for example uh the next uh one uh is uh speaks about biblical hospitality which is in uh, um well, that would be verse two uh do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers for some have entertained angels unaware we've got a added uh, uh incentive for doing this about entertaining angels unaware what's the what's the first uh scriptural uh, instance of that that comes to mind when you hear about uh, entertaining angels unaware. Abraham. Abraham. Sure. That's right, David. Mm -hmm. Brother Abraham. Yeah. yeah. The uh, the three men that came to Abraham while he was at the Oaks of Mamre, and uh, uh, he runs and tells Sarah to do this and bake, bake bread, and he kills the fattened calf, uh, and um, uh, and, and goes to great lengths to, to to show hospitality to these men. Well, as these men get ready to leave, and they look out over the uh, uh, the plain of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, it becomes obvious that one of them is the Lord. 
One of them is probably that angel of the Lord, uh, the pre-incarnate Christ, uh, and um, that's uh, one of the one of the three men. And uh, and this is where Abraham gets into that bargaining uh, for for Sodom. If you can find fifty righteous men uh, in that city. Uh, <laughs> 40 okay uh, 20 <laughs> you know <laughs> you're getting lower and lower and uh but anyway uh the, the point here is is hospitality uh and uh this was a an old tradition really uh, among most cultures uh it was it's particularly um I've, I've been most aware of it among the uh, cultures of the mid east uh and uh I've told you before about our Arab friend, uh, uh, and uh, when you go into his house, he he brings all the family in. She, his wife makes tea, and then he sits you down in a chair of honor, and asks about you, inquires about your family first of all, and how are you? And then there's all this 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 really kind of very uh, uh, courteous and uh, and uh, almost kind of formal uh, practice of of showing hospitality to uh, to strangers, and um, we can remember. I mean, you look at it, uh, how dependent Jesus was on hospitality. Uh, what did he say? The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Well, that really wasn't hyperbole. He didn't have a house of his own, uh, and uh, he evidently resided in the home of uh, Peter. Uh, in Capernaum uh, during most of his his ministry in Galilee, uh, when he was in um, in Judea, it appears that he stayed much of the time with Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and uh, uh, basically relied on them. And when he sent the disciples out uh, in into uh, to, to preach the kingdom of God, what did he tell them? Don't take any money in your belt. Don't take an extra tunic or anything else. He says, just find a house that is worthy and stay there, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, let your peace uh, be upon that house. And uh, so the disciples were told to, to do the same thing. Uh, we saw this in the, uh, uh, with the apostles. They obviously learned the lesson. Peter was staying with Simon the Tanner uh, and Joppa when the, the Holy Spirit uh, gave him his vision. Uh, Paul would stay in the homes of the house church people like uh, like Lydia and so forth when uh, he was uh, traveling around the uh, Mediterranean. Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila. That's a good point. Yeah. Yep. In the gospel. And, and, uh, and, 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 and that was mostly in Ephesus. Uh, and uh, evidently he stayed some with Timothy's family uh, when he was in Derbe uh, and, and Lystra in that area of Asia Minor. So uh, we, we see this tradition of hospitality, the fact that, that Christians, uh, you know, uh, extend that, uh, that, that uh, uh, especially within our own fellowship and being here in Mission Week. I mean, this is, uh, 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 we know that, uh, that, Mike uh, Elon is, and, and Karen have been are hosting uh, David Witt and some of them and, and have hosted Albert and Russell. Uh, Mike uh, O'Brien hosted uh, Guillermo last year from Cuba when he came. Uh, uh, when Ian and I went down to, uh, to Cuba, uh, a, a Christian woman let us have her apartment uh, and we stayed there in, in Havana. And, uh, you know, uh, they, they were... Uh, eager to do that. Uh, Armando said the next time we come, we'd stay in his house with him. And uh, this, is, this, this, is, this is the way it uh, works. And you see how this, uh, this, this little uh, exhortation uh, to be uh, willing and ready uh, to extend hospitality, especially within the, uh, the community of faith, uh, is so important. But, you know, it probably extends even beyond that. Uh, you remember... Uh, um, how uh, Jesus uh, reminds those, uh, tells those at his right hand, uh, the son of man, uh, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. We see this, this, this welcoming. And of course, you know, they said, when did we do that? Well, when you did it to the least of these, uh, you did it to me. Uh, and so uh, uh, this is a, uh, uh, this is a, uh, a, a hospitality is a, is a biblical principle. 
and uh, it's it's not just a nice thing to do. It's a it's it's one of those things that uh, we're talking about working out that brotherly love and and letting it continue. Um, that that, uh, uh, that that's uh, an, an excellent example of that. Well, there was a great line in that little in that little series, The Chosen, where Jesus is in Capernaum and he's preaching. And after he finished his preaching, I believe it was Simon, one of one of those spies. He picks up his his little backpack and helps him put it on his bag. He says, "Your house." <laughs> <laughs> and he looks at him. He makes a comical joke about it. That's a good one. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you know he doesn't have a home. he doesn't have a home. He really does. It was a great little comical. <laughs> Your house. <laughs> Your house. <laughs> so he put his backpack on. <laughs> By the way, that that same character in the chosen plays plays a lead role in in the Jesus Revolution. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And, so. I, and I went with some friends Friday and and brought back so many memories because I was converted just shortly before that began. It was a great little series. That was good. Well, I mean, but this is catch the movie. The movie, That's okay, movie. yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know, we were Brian and everything, and <laughs> you know, okay, yeah. remember what, yeah. what those days. Well, it's about five minutes already to, to worship. <laughs> I told you I wasn't gonna get very far. Be careful, Amy's a little fired up about this. Yeah, Amy fun. did good, yeah. I loved that. At the end, she took that card, wouldn't it? Through yeah. the yeah. Amy's like, wow, look at that. <laughs> <Finally, laughs> so before we go, I just want to say, I think she. Portrayed it as the women's function, but on on Monday, there's going to, there's going to be leaders and ministers from all over the city that are going to come there because that'll be probably the only chance. I mean, if they, unless they play a bookie from their own fellowship, Monday, right? Okay, their own churches, and, and apart from apart from Friday night, mm -hmm. that'll be their opportunity to spend time. They're so you might you might consider coming. Bring it back to the call. Yeah. I mean, you know, this could be this is an opportunity for the city to really get a good show. Karen and I are going to be. We're going to have tables. You said there's four of them coming. You're hosting two of them? I'm hosting three. You're hosting three. And I'm the other Carol is. Carol Witt. Because we've got a, a, a Carol Witt is, is, is director of leadership. Uh, yeah, you sent me a picture of Brian. And she was involved when Russell, prior to Russell, and during Russell, Russell and Albert's being here in regards to intercessory prayer team, spirit of martyrdom, coordinating with our prayer team uh, in advance and during their time here. Yeah. So, on a side note, we're going to slip in another 500 Bibles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> diverted from the boat. Well, I, mean, I mean, it's amazing. They got like 40,000 Bibles coming right now printed. I was like, 40,000. The last time I thought it was huge, it was 28,000 Bibles. Yeah. Just imagine 28,000 Bibles sitting in a room. It yeah. won't fit in this room. Yeah. It won't no, fit no, in this no, room. No. <laughs> you know? Like, oh. And that's just one printing. Oh, amazing. And that's, it. And that's only like one little job. thing they're doing. It's and really it, one little thing they're doing. Do <laughs> Okay. One yeah. book is about this wide. <laughs> we, we had a lady yeah. talk to us about printing Bibles in Braille. Never thought about it. But even one book like Genesis, she said, would cover your shelf is wide enough. Well, we have plenty of, I mean, I, I noticed, you know, it's really interesting when you go to different places. You see some churches, a lot of people carry a Bible. A lot of churches, nobody carries a Bible, you know. And, you know, it doesn't mean they don't have a Bible and they don't read the Bible necessarily. It's not carrying it. But when I go to some of the churches in the Dominican, you know, they have, yeah, Bible in your phone. But it'd be amazing how many people just have some little teeny New Testament little paperback, and they don't have a Bible. Yeah. They don't have a Bible. Yeah, that little one you get. You know. Yeah, that's what they have. I mean, and others, they treat their Bible like, you know, like their husband. I mean, it is... <laughs> Like, don't touch my Bible. You know, <laughs> nobody's gonna touch my Bible. It's my sacred Bible. And you look at some of them, and they're 30, 40 years old, 50 years old, you know, and torn pages, and you know, don't no, touch my Bible. You know, yeah. Well, not just not just that. It's just, you know, I think there's so many. I probably have three extra Bibles in my house from different versions that I've had, right? Different yeah. Bibles. And so now I have none. I've mine gone. Because if I if you have an extra Bible, bring it. Let's get rid of it. You yeah. know, if you have an extra Bible, you don't need that more than, you know, well, 
I know you got to have your NIV Bible. You got to have two, maybe two. Yeah. No, more than that, we don't need to have in the house. I, I I feel so bad. Other people have no Bible. Well, uh, it uh, we I, it's just it's so easy. We take it so much for granted here uh, that we have uh, have the Word of God and uh, uh, and uh, all of the sacrifices uh, that have been made over the centuries. Uh, to preserve that word uh, for us and to translate it and everything else, uh, uh, we, it's it's an incredible treasure, and uh, we uh, we're, uh, we're fortunate to just to even have it. Uh, so by all means, we we avail ourselves of reading it and studying it. So, um, so um, well. Uh, we will, uh, we're looking forward to Mission Week. Uh, uh, here for everybody, I will send out another email uh, about the, um, uh, about the uh, class uh, donation uh, and uh, keep everybody up to date on that. Uh, and uh, we'll, when we get back together, it'll be March 19th. Bear in mind, we're going to be taking, uh, having a couple of weeks uh, of Sundays off here. Uh, we'll be back in, in, uh, uh, in uh, Hebrews 13 and um, daylight savings time, oh. and uh, I think I've just about settled on on our our next uh, course of study here. Uh, I'm going to uh, honor a uh, a long standing request from Claire uh, and um, the book of Isaiah, the prophecy of Isaiah. <laughs> Uh, That'll take two years. <laughs> <laughs> it took a year in ESF. That was once a week. Yeah. Easily. <laughs> I've been talking with Dale about about some approaches to it that uh, mm -hmm. be a little more thematic. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, anyway, I'm uh, taking me a while to get uh, get to get my materials together for that, but. Uh, Let's uh, let's close with the with the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Amen. Thank you all. See you next for time. They're going to cancel. They're going to stop daylight savings. They, they talk about it every year. Are they going to do that again? They mention it on the news. <laughs> I don't care what they go to. Just leave it alone. Okay, so keep you know, changing. So, so if you want regular time, do regular time. Daylight savings time, do daylight savings. Just quit changing. <laughs> uh, like I said, so just go a half an hour in between yeah. and forget it. <laughs> Just leave it. That way it fixes. <laughs> Big countries do this. No, change it, you know. I think yeah. Canada and US. Oh, I wonder that. The, the, the countries didn't do it until.